Starborn Cafe by Miss Yuki1990. Chapter 10 Grounding. Thor was sitting alone in his room. The sun had yet to rise and he couldn't sleep. His thoughts were focused on one Harman Sigurdsson. A part of him wanted to go back to Starborn right away, but another part was telling him to take his time. Granted, it was a very small part of him. It was the part that still feared that Hadavan was no better than Loki, and that small part was quickly suppressed by the other part, and surprisingly, his heart, his heart, was telling him to go back to Starboard this very moment. Something was pulling him back, and its call was growing stronger by the minute. He sighed, stood up, and walked over to his wardrobe. He pulled out his bag and took a small round mirror out of it, feeling its slight weight on his palm. It was big enough to fit in his hand. Taking a seat on his bed, he took the mirror in both hands and closed his eyes, murmuring a few words in his mother language under his breath. The reflective glass of the mirror glimmered, and moments later the beautiful face of his mother appeared instead of his reflection. Thor, my son, I am surprised you called so soon. She spoke laughingly, and a smile tilted Thor's lips. I need your advice, mother, he said, and Frigga smiled at him. Speak, my son, she said, and Thor frowned. I met someone, Frigga frowned and tilted her head to the side. He is a bartender at a cafe. His name is Adavan Sigurdsson. Frigga's eyes widened for a mere second before her lips tilted into a small, mysterious smile. And, she asked and Thor licked his lips. I don't know, mother. I went to see him and I felt strange ever since. It is like something is calling me to him, calling me to his side. I read about his past, and he is a great warrior. I have seen his heart, and I saw that he is weary of battle. He is powerful in magic, but does not wish to use it to harm others. He seems honorable, and I must admit that he is very beautiful. Frigga laughed charmingly, eyes glimmering with mirth. I fail to see your plight, my son, she said, and Thor sighed. I keep remembering that child carrying the mark of thunder you mentioned before. Da. Frigga nodded her head in understanding. Worry not, Thor. If you feel drawn to young Harvin, then go to him. I dare say that you shall not regret it. You know something, mother, Thor concluded, narrowing his eyes at his mother. You know something you are not willing to share with me. Frigga smiled at him lovingly. Now, where would be the fun in that, my son? You should live your life on your own. I am only here to give you advice. Go to him, speak with him. Your instincts have never failed you before. Why deny yourself now? Thor hummed and looked out the window of his room. Dawn was breaking and the sky was painted red. You're right, mother. He looked back at the mirror. I shall go and speak with him. I must know if he feels the same. Frigga nodded and offered an encouraging smile. Go, my son, stay safe, she said, and Thor nodded. Greet everyone for me, mother, and stay safe. Without the mirror glowed, and once it stopped glowing, the only thing he could see was his own reflection. He sighed and put the mirror under his pillow. Looking at Mjolnir that rested against the wall beside the head of his bed, Thor took a deep breath and stood up. She's right. I should go, he muttered and made his way out. Otherwise, my heart and mind will no longer know peace. Adavan smiled when the door of the cafe opened and a tall man with dirty blonde hair walked in. Neville! It's been so long, he greeted warmly and Neville grinned. The two met in the middle of the cafe and hugged. Hurry, I'll miss you, Neville said and Harry smiled at him when they parted. What brings you here? Harry asked and led Neville over to the bar. Lerner is visiting relatives with our children, so I thought while they are at it, I could come and see how you're living. You know I don't like large gatherings, especially loud large gatherings. Hadavan laughed and placed a cup of tea in front of Neville and another one beside it, before rounding the bar and taking a seat beside his old friend. I know, and I'm sure Luna doesn't mind. Neville chuckled. No, she doesn't. She's into greetings. Greet her for me when you see her. As well as your children, how old are they now? Harry asked, and a happy smile decorated Neville's face. Frank is 14 years old, Alice is 12, and Harry is 13 months old. Ben's eyes widened slightly, and Neville sighed, placing a hand on Hadavan's back. You did a lot for us, Harry. Ben, he corrected himself and rolled his eyes, earning a small laugh from Hadavan. I would have lost both Luna and Frank if it weren't for you. You're my friend, Neville. I only did what was right. 
Edelman said, and Neville gave Ben's shoulder a small squeeze. And I will never be able to express my gratitude. You know that you only have to call, and I'll do whatever I can to help you, right? Ben nodded and covered Neville's hand with his own. Oh, I know, Neville. Your friendship means the world to me. Neville smiled and looked around with a sigh. This place is wonderful. Thank you. I can feel your magic circulating everywhere, he said and looked at Ben. Is everything all right with it? Ben sighed and shrugged elegantly. I'm handling it to the best of my abilities. To be perfectly honest, it is getting increasingly harder to find a way to contain it. Neville frowned and worried. You have yet to find your chosen. Ben's expression turned slightly sad. That's not the problem, Neville, he murmured. Then what is? Ben looked at him and Neville almost winced when he saw the worry in Ben's eyes. Worry and the shadows of old fears. What if I'm not good enough? You stop right there, Howard James Potter. Neville snapped and Ben recoiled with wide eyes. He forgot that Neville could be quite forceful when he wanted to be. You are a man anyone would be happy to have as a life mate, a friend, and a consort. You are kind, wise, generous, powerful, and you don't have a selfish bone in your body, so don't you dare think yourself unworthy of anyone. You deserve the best. If nothing else, whoever they are, they should worry about not being worthy of you. Ben laughed quietly and shook his head. After everything I've done, you still think so highly of me. Neville frowned and grabbed Ben's forearm, tugging on it until Ben turned to face Neville fully, warm brown gaze, diving into Ben's emerald depths. You did those things because no one else was brave enough to do them. You sacrificed years of peace to bring peace to others. You sacrificed a good part of your life to give life to others. And you asked nothing but peace in return. Neville let go of Ben's arm and moved back a little. If it were up to me, nothing less than a god would be fit enough for you. Ben blushed and Neville gifted him with a gentle brotherly smile. You deserve someone who will be able to take care of you for once. You don't need someone who will depend on you, but someone who will be able to protect you for a change. Ben sighed and looked at Neville with a smile. I suppose you're right, he said, and Neville snorted. Like I said, he spoke and took a sip of his tea. You've taken care of others for your whole life. Even now you're doing so. Ben raised an eyebrow and Neville shot him a sarcastic stare. What do you take me for? Blind? He nodded towards the ceiling. I can see what you did in this place. You just couldn't retire to some mountain and live the rest of your life in peace and quiet. You just had to open up a place for tormented souls, didn't you? Ben chuckled to shake his head. You know me, Neville. I know you self-sacrificed and griffin dog. Neville drawled and then laughed. Well then, am I happy to see you again. Ben breathed out and Neville chuckled and patted Ben's shoulder. And I'm happy to see you again, Harry. Although I would have been happier to see you married to some tall, handsome hug of a man than alone like this. Ben laughed loudly and Neville chuckled. In that moment, the door opened and Neville raised an eyebrow when Ben's head snapped toward the door and a shiver ran down his last body. Neville barely stopped himself from whistling at the men entered. Good morning, he greeted, and Ben stood up, quickly bowing at him. Someone like him? Neville pressed out through his teeth and then hissed at him to keep quiet before facing the newcomer with a smile walking over to him. Good morning, Thor. I'm glad to see you again. Neville's eyes widened for a moment. He got a hold of himself when his eyes met Thor's. Thor's stormy blues darkened for a moment and Neville had a sudden need to pack up and leave as soon as possible. You know what ha- Then- Said man turned around and looked at Neville with a confused stare. I just remembered that grandmother asked me to pick up something for her. I'll see you later, all right? Neville, stay safe! Neville rounded the two and left the cafe as though hellhounds were chasing him. Thor stared after Neville with a raised eyebrow while then did an impressive imitation of a fish for a few moments. His mouth snapped shut when Thor turned to look at him, eyebrows meaning the line of blonde hair. A friend of yours? Ben quickly gained control over his tongue swallowing and straightening before he made an even bigger fool of himself. Yes, I'm sorry for that. He must have been in a hurry. Thor chuckled, and Ben felt a shiver run down his body. Do not worry. I came so we could speak. Ben's breath caught in his throat, and he looked away from Thor's captivating eyes. Of course, please take a seat, he said and walked over to the bar. Thor smirked and followed after him, startling a bit, when both cups vanished off of the bar while Ben prepared drinks for the both of them. Thor took a seat and crossed his arms on the bar, watching the wizard work. It seems you are feeling better than last time, Thor commented, and then looked up from the drink he was preparing. 
Uh, I'm feeling better, much better. Thor nodded and smiled in thanks when Ven placed a cup in front of him, his smile growing a bit when he recognized the drink as the one he drank last time. Did you think of a name for it? He asked and had a Ven shook his head. No, I can't think of a name for it at the moment. I'm sure it will come to me in time. Ven placed another cup on the bar and rounded it, taking a seat beside Thor, who smiled and nodded. So, Ven said and took a sip of his drink. What did you want to talk about? Thor sighed and turned in the chair to face Ven fully. For the longest moment, he just observed Ven, and the bartender had a hard time staying calm. For once, his magic wasn't bursting at the seams, but it was restless nevertheless. He could feel it crawling under his skin, begging to either be set free or trying to answer the call of Thor's own power. It was overwhelming. It made Ven's body burn and his heart beat quickly, but this time he kept an iron-hard control over it. He was determined not to make a fool out of himself. I must say, out of it, Thor started, and Ven almost jumped in his seat, managing to stop himself in the nick of time. You've made me think and feel strange things. Thor decided that if he wanted to get anything done, he would have to be his usual blunt self. Even though he came a long way from the rash brat he was a few years back, there were moments when he could still be quite forceful and blunt. He only learned to control himself better. I apologize if I've made you uncomfortable, Ven said, and Thor raised an eyebrow. He could see that Ven's eyes darkened slightly and that he was pulling back, and Thor didn't like that for some reason. He didn't like that at all. I never said that, he said and smiled when Ven tilted his head to the side a bit with a confused expression. I only said you make me feel strange, but not in a bad way. Ven tensed up and his eyes widened for a mere second. Then what? Thor sighed and took his drink, taking a sip of the enchanting ambrosia he had discovered in this strange place. You... He started, but his voice faded as he looked for the right words. You attract me, Odovan. Ven's lips parted slightly and he stared at Thor with surprise. I've known you for no more than three days, but I feel drawn to you. I feel like I should stay with you and never let you out of my sight, and yet I don't know why. Your magic is calling out to me, and your heart... Stop! Then interrupted him and closed his eyes. Please, say no more. He stood up, rounded the bar, and threw his drink into the sink. Then what are you doing? This isn't right, Anne! He told her, his heart aching something awful. He shouldn't be with me if it's just my magic calling out to him. I feel like I'm not giving him a choice. But that... I came here to tell you what I feel, Hanavan. Thor interrupted Ern, standing on his feet with hands braced on the bar. I, I'm not yet certain what it is exactly, but I... Then took a towel and impulsively started to clean the tables just to stop himself from looking at Thor. He was slowly losing control again and he didn't want that to happen. Harvan, stop that and talk to me, please. Thor followed after Harvan, who avoided him moving on to another table before Thor could take a hold of him. I'm afraid we have nothing to talk about. Harvan spoke, barely managing to stop his voice from wavering. Harvan, listen, if you do not feel the same- No! Harvan cried out before he could stop himself and turned around to look at Thor, not realizing that he had made a fatal mistake. He bumped into the table behind him when he realized Thor was closer than he thought he would be, finding himself looking up Thor's eyes, heartbeat stuttering when tall, strong man took a step closer, effectively trapping Ven between the table and himself. No? Thor asked, unsmirked. Ven's breath hitched in his throat, and he realized that if the God of Thunder took another step closer, out of him would practically be forced to sit on the table. No! Out of him spoke. He was trying to keep a cool head and push down his magic that was running wild in his veins. I'm not indifferent about you. He tried to regain control over himself and his words. Thor hummed and took another step forward. His instincts never let him run before, and right now they were telling him to grab the slightly smaller man and never let him go. Something in him in the deepest part of him recognized this man. It recognized Hadavan on a primal level. It recognized Hadavan as his and his alone. You are not indifferent, you say? Hadavan swallowed difficultly when Thor took another step closer and pushed his knee between Ben's legs, taking a firm hold of Hadavan's forearms when the raven-haired man raised his hands and placed them on Thor's broad chest in a faint attempt to push him away and put some distance between them, not even aware of the quiet, pleading whine that escaped his parted lips. 
Why are you fighting so hard against whatever is happening here, Haravan? Fen's mouth dried, and no matter how hard he tried to avoid doing that, he looked up and his eyes dove into Thor's. Maybe it would be easier just to give in. Maybe he would finally be able to go back to how he was before, if he just gave in to this need. Thor let go of Haravan's forearms when the bartender ducked his head and the god of thunder reached up, touching those pale cheeks with the tips of his fingers. His breath wavered when his fingers brushed Haravan's fringe away from that beautiful face to reveal a faded lightning bolt scar on Ven's forehead. One had to look hard to see it because it was almost too faded to see, but to Thor it was clear. You are that child, Thor whispered in pure amazement. You are the child with the mark of thunder. Fen tried to look away, but Thor kept his face within his gentle hold and stopped him. My mother spoke of you a long time ago. I thought I would never find you. Hadavan tried to say something, but the words were stuck somewhere in his throat. I'm sorry, he managed to press out, and Thor frowned in confusion. I didn't mean to deceive... Fret not. But I only heard my mother mention you once. I had no idea that this was what she meant. Thor muttered lowly and then swallowed difficultly. I had no idea that the Norns decided to gift me with such a powerful, strong consort. Ven's eyes widened. Thor, I... Before Ven could say another word, Thor captured his lips in a kiss, and Ven could do nothing but moan. Then his magic sang in his blood, his heart was beating loudly in his ears, and his hands fisted on Thor's chest as though they had a will of their own. Thor moved closer, and his arms settled on Ven's waist, and he tasted his chosen for the first time. He could feel Ven's magic burst out of him and wrap himself around them. He could feel his own power respond to Ven's magic, and every fiber of Thor's being trembled and burned. He deepened the kiss and pulled Ven closer, moaning when Ven's long, elegant fingers entangled in his hair, keeping him close and stopping him from breaking the kiss. Not that Thor wanted to, as far as he was concerned, his whole life, everything he lived through, every experience, every battle, every lesson he had learned, has led to this single moment. They parted, gasping for air, and Thor leaned his forehead against Ven's. The slightly smaller man was shivering, and his magic was dancing happily around them. He tilted his head up a bit, and Thor shivered when he looked into those ethereal, burning emerald eyes. They were glowing with power beyond anything Thor has ever seen and felt, and for some reason he suddenly felt humbled. He felt like he should kneel in front of this creature and thank the Nords for intending Hadavan to be his. Instead of doing that, he reached up and cupped Ven's cheek with his hand, gently passing with his thumb over those kiss-abused lips. Mine, he whispered possessively, and Ven leaned into Thor's hand, eyes slipping closed as his whole body trembled. Yours, he breathed out and tilted his head to the side to lay a kiss in the middle of Thor's palm. His magic suddenly calmed and pulled back into him, and those amazing eyes opened to look up at Thor, who gifted him with a smile full of comfort. You shall suffer no longer, he promised, and Ven's mouth opened slightly, eyes widening in shock and wonder. I make this pledge on my honor and my blood, Thor spoke. I, Thor Odinson, hereby swear on my life that I shall prove myself your worthy keeper. Ben swallowed over a lump and nodded his head, unable to speak. Do you, Hadavan Sigurdsson, accept my pledge? Will you allow me to court you and prove to you that I am worthy of your affection? Hadavan tried to speak, but his voice was stuck in his throat. Thor smiled, and Hadavan's heart skipped in beat. In that moment, it was as though a calm settled over his mind. His magic pulsated and his thoughts cleared. He looked in Thor's eyes and tried to find something, anything that would tell him the man wasn't willing in this. He tried to find a trace of anything that would tell him Thor was doing this just because something was making him do this. But to Ven's honest surprise, all he found was honesty, and something that he couldn't quite name yet, but it made him feel warm and safe. A small, calm smile appeared on Ven's face, and Thor couldn't help but think that he had never in his life seen anything more beautiful than that. Do you, Hadavan? He asked again and then nodded his head, for once refusing to think. Yes, 
he said, and Thor let go of a relieved sigh. Adieu.